If you want to learn how to improve your finances using one word, keep watching because this video is for you. This is Ham Lee III from Spiritual Combatants where we're training soldiers for Christ. I want to thank you for joining us for our first Finance Friday message, at least for a high five. And so this is sharing the one word that you need, that we all need to improve our finances this year. So regardless of whether or not you're watching it and this is in January or in the middle of June, you can still use this one single word to improve your finances dramatically. And that word is no, nada, zilch, nothing, smacking on the hand, no, nah, bruh. We ain't going there. No. And so uh, oftentimes we don't use this word no because we are either, you know, we're emotional about certain purchases we make. Sometimes we feel compelled to keep up with other people. Sometimes we have our own status that we want to kind of obtain to. And so there's, we feel obligated in certain areas and reasons why we just continue to spend and just to hang out and have a good time. And sometimes that's our reason. We just want to just be chilling. But all those reasons that we have are keeping us from being able to meet our financial goals. So you think about it. Every time that you give yes to something over over here, you're giving a no to something else over there. And oftentimes that over there, these things that's over here, those are things like getting out of debt, saving for your child's college, buying a house, some of those major goals that each of us have year after year after year. And so the last thing that I want for you this year is to say, you know what, a whole year goes by and the same goals I had last year, I was no closer to meeting them this year. So no is a powerful word to help you do that. And so I want to share with you four areas to be able to say no to improve your financial standing. So these four words and some of the things I'm going to give in today's talk comes from a book called High Five Finances. High Five Finances is a book that I wrote very short you can find this book on my website, spiritualcombatants.com. If you click on the books link, and then you'll see it toward the bottom of the page. It's like a blue colored uh, uh, book with white lettering. Click on the link. You can download a free PDF, or you can purchase a hard copy, or you can download an ebook or purchase an ebook as well. That's up to you, but you can get this book for free today. Nothing, nada. That's a, that's a good no, or a good nothing at least. So let's get into it. Well, the first area that we all need to say no is, into is our gifts and in holidays spent in, in the holidays. So with the so it's now January, we just passed the holiday season. And so most of us spend a lot of money on people that we really don't see it in the year. I mean, during Christmas, we want everybody to have an all-star Christmas. And we just feel compelled to buy people stuff. And I mean, not even just little stuff. Like we got it's it's almost like the previous year was like the, the mark for what we got to beat for this next year. And every year I got to do things just a little bit better than what I did them last year. And instead of us just saying, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm going to cut down my list. I know uh, maybe 10, 15 years ago, I told my wife, look, every day is Christmas as far as I'm concerned. We can't go out just having all-star Christmases every year. I said, I don't want to do it. And on top of that, I, I just can't buy every last single person that we know a gift. There's so many people that we don't see throughout the year. So I'm, I'm not going to feel bad about doing it. Or I can't because at first I was, I, I felt bad for not buying certain people gifts when I didn't even see them all year. I didn't talk to them on the phone back then, you know, talking about email or what have you. I didn't email you. I didn't call you. I haven't seen you. I'm not buying you a gift. I'm not, not going to go back through those things. And then secondly, is with our holiday spending. Same thing with holidays. We have all these different holidays that are geared, it seems like they're just geared for us to spend money. You think about, now we have Christmas just passed, now we're about to hit up uh, Valentine's Day. There's some people that don't have any money. They know they, they broke, but then the, the wife could be mad if the husband don't come home with you know, a bouquet of roses and have the steak dinner and, and have all these rose petals and all the stuff going all over the place. You know, buy them some new you know, lingerie or something. I'm like, well, y'all know y'all don't have any money. But yet you're putting, so now like again, buying gifts, you're putting this requirement on your spouse to be able to buy something because you're going to be hot if they don't. The same thing with the husband. So maybe now, today, you have a talk about that. Look, I buy your car. You know, Valentine's Day, 
February 14th is another day. Let me find another way that we can show our love that doesn't cause us to go further into debt and to spend money that we don't have. You know, yes, I do want to show you can, you know, you have to kind of word it right. But yeah, I, I do want to show that I love you, but I want to show you that every day. I want to do that for you on Tuesday just because it's Tuesday or not spend a lot of money on this one day when we have other goals that we're trying to meet. And so that may be a conversation that you need to have with your family. Just as I told you, I had a conversation conversation with my family. It was a little bit one way. I, I will admit that back then. I was a little frustrated, maybe at myself, but I wanted to make sure that we are on the same page and at least we had a chance to discuss it so that we can meet this one goal and this one need. Okay. So number two is sales. This is Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Thirsty Thursdays, whatever other day that they come up with, this 20% off, you know, the 4th of July sale, whatever sale that's going on, no. And we go out, some of us go out to every last single sale that's ever out there. And we're buying stuff. We already have four TVs, but this TV is 60% off, so I have to have it. Why do you need that TV? When you have like four other TVs that are working just fine, nothing's wrong with them, but it's like just because this is 60% off, I have to have it. You know, or there's some shoes. There's some shoes that 30% off. I already got 15 pair of black shoes, but this one more pair of black shoes, the money that you don't need to spend. But we go out in a frenzy. I mean, absolute frenzy, fighting. People are dying over like Black Friday items, merchandise, regular just items and people are being hurt over every year all because we get into this driven frenzy about having a sale and so I went out to Black Friday this past year and this is probably like my maybe fourth time I'm out of four decades I've been you know 43 and I've only been to a handful of Black Fridays and the only reason why I went was because my headphones went out and so I said, okay, I've had my headphones for several years and they had a set of the same headphones or a model better and they were half off because because the, my, my, the model that I had were, were two, um, two series back. And so they came out with the newest pair and so the, the one lower was half off. I was like, okay, half off. I'm gonna go down there, walked in to Best Buy, grabbed it and then I saw something else that I actually needed I was buying some things this tripod that the camera's on right now so I went and picked that up and then I walked right out the store I didn't try to go looking around or anything else they had I was laser focused boom I needed it I had those headphones for for maybe about two and a half years already so I've definitely got my money's worth and so now I'm going to go out and, and, and then I'm going to use the money that I had, I, I, I've, I've saved and, and different things to be able to go out what I need. And so it was just on a, on a sale. So I go get it. But beside that, I don't go out to any type of sale just because they say they have something on sale. I, unless, I, unless there's something I need, then I'll use that sale as a means to get something at a cheaper rate. But most of the time, like for clothes, I shop at... Ross or, or TJ Maxx or something else like that. I, I rarely buy clothes or shoes at full price. Now, because I wear a size 15, most of the time I'm probably at the mercy of, of companies to buy things at the at their retail price. So uh, sometimes I'm, I'm forced to buy things or even at a higher markup depending on what the item may be. So I, 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 I can't really control that too much because of my shoe size. But when it comes down to clothes, if I can find it cheaper, then I'll try to find a way to buy it cheaper. But I don't just go out every week just to shop. And sometimes we, we do that. We just go out just to shop, walk around the mall just to walk around. And then you wind up picking up things that you see that you like that may be on the sale, but that you, that's something that, you know, you could have done with that. So third thing is entertainment. We spend a lot of money just going out. Think about just the movies alone. There used to be a time when I would go out to the movies every weekend. And so you buy tickets. Maybe for your family, it costs maybe $30. Then it costs almost $40 just to buy the popcorn and water. I know some people sneak stuff in, but think about how much it costs. You know, almost $100 a shot. So then in a month, you're spending $400 just on going out just to the movies. Then if you have some friends that say, hey, let's go out to, uh, well, I'll get it and go on to the next one. But some people are like, hey, let's go out to this venue. Let's go out to that venue. So all you do, like I used to do, is I just look at my account, as long as there's money, charge it, good to go. Hey, hey, can we go out and go do this? Let me see. Check the bank account, good to go. 
charge it, let's go. And so I don't think about budgeting or kind of, I don't have like a certain set, like, okay, look, you know, I'm just gonna spend a hundred dollars this month on going out, once I'm done, I'm done. No, we just keep looking in the account, as long as it's good, it's good. But sometimes we gotta say no to some things, like, no, man, I'm gonna wait till that come out on 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 video, and so my family and I do that. There's only maybe last year we only went to maybe six, maybe five or six movies in theater for the entire year. There's only certain movies that will say, you know what, I want to go see that now. Most of the time we just wait it out, we're patient, and just and wait until it comes out on Netflix or Hulu or something like that, and then we'll just kind of watch it there, and then I, we'll just have some popcorn, have a time at just a you know quality time at the house, my wife and I, and then just chill and do our thing there that's normally what I do or even if we rent it we can rent it and it's $5.99 in the comfort of my own home as opposed to paying $70 and I'm out there in the midst of a crowd of other people so I don't know that's just, that's just my thing all right so the uh, number four the fourth thing is eating out and so my wife and I, you know, we're here, it's just our, ourselves now, we're empty nesting. My daughter is a senior in college now. But when she was in the house in high school, we were in Texas. And so we went out, at least for the last 15 years, we always had, you know, Friday, we go out to eat. And then we added, cause you're in Texas, so we added Taco Tuesday, we went to Rosa's. So that was our thing that we did every Tuesday, and every Friday. And so those eight times going out to eat, we spent over $600 a month going out to eat. And that's just two nights a week. I mean, I couldn't believe it when I did the math and worked it out. I was like, $600 that we're spending on two nights? Eight times? I couldn't imagine if we were eating out every day. And sometimes we do that. Sometimes you think about people, they just go out to eat all the time for lunch. You know, they're just, oh man, I can't, I can't really eat right now. Or I can't fix a meal at home. So let me go buy something here. So you're like, hey, I got it in my account. Let's charge it. Good to go. But we don't think about how all those things are adding up. And it does. I mean, when you're talking about $600 just to eat out eight times in a month, man, that's a lot of money. And so what I want you to do, so we're at the, this last one. So uh, just, just, just to review, the, the first thing that you should say no to is for the gifts and holiday spending. You also need to say no to the sales that go on. You need to say no to entertainment and no to eating out. And so I'm not telling you just to become a hermit and don't do anything at all, but to have some balance. And so if you get my book, I'll talk a little bit more about budgeting and, and some of those other things that you also need. And I don't think a person needs to just do nothing, but we just can't have a blanket yes on everything that's going on. And we do need to say no to some things. So as a call to action, and this is also in my book, what I want to challenge you to do is for the next two weeks, two weeks, 14 days, is whatever you do, do half of it. If you go out to eat every week, just say, you know what, I'm going to do just half less. I'm just going I'm just going to go out one of those weeks. If one of the things that you do, I eat out every day for breakfast, I'm not going to do that. Go buy, go buy a box of cereal and some milk, and then use that for a week, and then compare it with the next week that you have. Whatever it is that you do, do less of it by half, and then when the two weeks is up, compare what you normally spend, compare it to what you what you spent and what you saved. And that may be a real telltale sign on how you can get a little bit closer to meeting your goal. But a lot of that is being able to be content with what you have and controlling your spending and saying no a little bit more so that you can have a yes toward your goal. So I hope this one word for the year be a blessing to you. May God bless you. Abundantly, if you have any other questions or concerns or comments, hit me up. Please download my book on spiritualcombatants.com and look for the next message where we share more information about finances so you can have a blessed financial future. May God bless you abundantly. God bless.